So we're here at the example table, and in this video we're going to be talking about Taylor series. So let's start with some function, f of x, and let's suppose that this is equal to a power series. So the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of c sub n times x minus a to the n. Let's write out a few of these terms. This is c sub 0 plus c sub 1 times x minus a plus c sub 2 times x minus a squared plus c sub 3, x minus a cubed, plus c sub 4, x minus a to the fourth, and so on. Now we know that we can differentiate power series, and in fact we can differentiate them term by term. So we can consider f prime of x, and we know this to be the, derivative, the sum of the derivatives of all these terms. So the derivative of c sub 0 is 0, so that disappears. The derivative of c sub 1 x minus a is just c sub 1. The derivative of the next term is 2 c sub 2 times x minus a. The derivative of the next term is 3 c sub 3 x minus a squared, and then plus 4 c sub 4 x minus a cubed, and so on. So in particular, if we evaluate f prime at a, all of the terms with an x minus a factor in them disappear because all of these become zero and we're left with nothing but c sub 1. Let's now look at the second derivative. So the second derivative will be the, the term-wise derivative of this thing. So c sub 1 disappears, this next term just becomes 2 c sub 2, this becomes 6 c sub 3 x minus a to the first power. The next thing becomes 12 c sub 4 x minus a squared, and so on. So if we evaluate f double prime at a, something very similar happens. All of the terms with an x minus a factor become zero, so we're left with 2 c sub 2. What happens when we take the third derivative? So we get f triple prime of x. This becomes 6 c cubed. The next term becomes 24 c sub 4 x minus a, plus a bunch of other things with x minus a in them. So f triple prime of a is 6 c sub 3. And there's a pattern in here. Every time we take a derivative, one more factor from the exponent comes down. So we end up with things like 2 times 1, 3 times 2 times 1, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So the general pattern is that, is that the nth derivative evaluated at a is equal to n factorial times c sub n. we can rearrange this to get a formula for c sub n. c sub n is the nth derivative evaluated at a divided by n factorial. So what did we just show? We have a nice theorem. If the function f of x has a power series representation, Uh, representation at a, then the coefficients c sub n are given by this formula, nth derivative at a divided by n factorial. And this leads us to our definition. The sum from n equals 0 to infinity of f n at a divided by n factorial times x minus a to the n is the Taylor series of the function f of x. 
Uh, excuse me, centered at A. Always remember. Centered at A. Let's look at an example. If we set f of x equal to e to the x, then every derivative of f is simply e to the x. So if we want to find the Taylor series of e to the x centered at 0, we evaluate all of these at 0. So f and 0 is e to the 0, which is 1. So the Taylor series. of e to the x centered at 0 is the sum from n equals 0 to infinity, nth derivative at 0, which is simply 1, divided by n factorial times x to the n. So that is simply x to the n over n factorial. Now, one question that I've left unanswered does e to the x actually equal the sum from n equals 0 to infinity x to the n over n factorial? In greater generality, when does a function equal its Taylor series?